This is the BrainChip Quarterly Investor Podcast. Join us for answers to some of the most frequently asked questions put forward by BrainChip shareholders each quarter. This podcast is for both existing investors and potential future investors who are interested in the development of AI. Welcome to part one of our two-part podcast interview with BrainChip Chairman Antonio J. Viana. My name is Tony Dore, Director of Global Investor Relations for BrainChip. Each quarter, I compile a list of some of our shareholders' most frequently asked questions and put those questions to a senior member of the BrainChip team. Today, I'll be putting those questions directly to BrainChip's Chairman, Antonio J. Viana. Hi, Antonio, and welcome to the Quarterly Investor Podcast. Hi, Tony. Uh, good, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever anyone is listening to the podcast. Great to be here and uh, looking forward to having a good session with you. Okay, well, let's get into it. So, Antonio, let's start this discussion by going back to our AGM in Sydney in May this year and the strike we picked up against the remuneration report. Firstly, can you explain what the practical implications of that vote are for BrainChip? And secondly, what is the company doing in response to the vote? Well, well, Tony, first and foremost, it, it, it is what it is. The, the, vote, the vote doesn't actually deter us in the least bit in terms of what we're doing and, and how we're progressing as a company. The cold reality is that, you know, the, the share price is down. And because of that, we we had the vote against the REM report. You know, I, looking back, I, I, I do believe the vote was more a referendum on the share price than anything to do with the REM report. I mean, if you if you go back to 2022 in the AGM, you know, there was really strong feedback uh, that we need to have performance based compensation schemes in place. It was made crystal clear to us back then that there was strong disapproval of previous compensation schemes that were, were, were put in place before my arrival. So you fast forward to, to the 2023 AGM and hence the most recent REM report, you know, we did exactly that. Um, you know, other than base salary, all bonus, all employee stock compensation is now performance based and and this was clearly described in the 2023 rem report you know yet it it got voted down so you know sadly i i haven't received any you know feedback per se on on the actual rem report and its contents which would lead to a no vote so with that said you know it is what it is you know, the vote doesn't deter the company in the least bit. It doesn't deter the board in the least bit. We're, we're absolutely confident in how the company's progressing and, and we're going to continue down the path that we're on. Thanks, Antonio. An area of focus for some investors is the level of compensation paid to non-executive directors. Are you able to share some insights into how BrainChip's net remuneration compares to other such plans? and how and why NEDs are remunerated differently to other directors on the board. You know, you know, Tony, quite, quite surprising to me. Uh, you know, this, uh, this issue has actually garnered a bit more attention than I think it actually deserves. Um, you know, especially, you know, when thinking about the bigger fish that, that, that we need to be frying. You know, our NED compensation schemes they're in line with with global tech norms. We've we've even had this verified and confirmed by a couple of independent industry firms in the field of of global tech comp. Now, I I do recognize that you know the issue here is Australia itself and the existing kind of notions and perceptions of how NEDs are and and, and should be compensated. However, as I've said many times, we're we're a global technology company with operations in Australia and France and India and the US. And, and we have intentions to grow and grow materially. So with that said, we, we need to compete at all levels as a global tech company. So um, we're, we're going to be just that. I, mean, I, I should, though, with your question, I, I should take the opportunity to mention that we, we are anticipating a further change 
uh, to our NED compensation plan to, to bring it even further in line with global norms. And that's the introduction of a hold threshold for, for NED stock. In essence, we're going to be implementing a requirement that our NEDs be holding certain levels of brain chip stock. And again, this is, this is consistent with global norms, and I see this as kind of an evolutionary change to, to make certain that we stay in line with those norms. Um, but, but other than that, uh, you know, the company remains confident that, that we've got a scheme here that um, kind of puts us right in the middle, so to speak, with respect to how NEDs should be compensated globally. One of the comments you made at the AGM was about the work the board has done and is still doing to ensure Brainchip meets global reporting expectations in areas such as ESG and remuneration. Are you able to elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, ha happy to elaborate. Uh, there's obviously a lot, a lot we can say here. Um, but let me start by kind of underscoring that our, our number one priority has always been and always will be like any commercial enterprise uh, to create shareholder value by growing our business. Without that, nothing else matters. Now, with, with that said, and understanding our position as a, as a, as a publicly traded company, we'll, we'll certainly ensure compliance with respect to any reporting obligations on whatever front. You know, at, at Brainship, we understand our reporting requirements and, and we're going to work hard to meet them. But we won't release information just to release it or just to satisfy someone or satisfy some group. We're, we're not into checking boxes. And, and additionally, we, we will be ultra protective of our partners, our licensees, their business and our overall business. You know, the good news is that we have a robust vetting process internally for what we release and what we don't, and, and we're going to continue to trust and, and, and use that process. Now, specific to issues like ESG or REM uh, or, or diversity, you know, we are diligently working these, and, and, and at the same time, you know, we're keeping tabs on the fluidity in the market with respect to these areas. These have become really hard subjects and they're under a tremendous amount of scrutiny and change. And, and, and sadly, they've also become very political. Um, you know, using the U.S. as an example, there's a recent Supreme Court ruling um, that has to do with Harvard University and the University of North Carolina um, that's already had a massive impact on uh, diversity, equity, inclusion expectations as it relates to equal protection under U.S. law. And so there's already a groundswell of activity in the U.S. around how that's going to impact uh, corporations' reporting requirements. So we're going to have to stay on top of, of issues like that. You know, with respect to ESG, though, um, I, I think it, I, I think we 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 should also communicate that we want to ensure that that our principles and value propositions come out in any ESG policy that we have, and and we're absolutely working on this. You, Tony, better than anyone know how hard we're we're working on this to to get ready for for our our future reports. Um, you know, we don't want an ESG report just a just a virtue signal or or comply. Uh, we, we want a solid report that reflects what we do and how we drive change. You know, we're we're a company whose vision is on efficiency first. Our our products are aimed at helping industries create solutions that reduce carbon footprints. Uh, reduce costs for end devices, are resource efficient. You know, one of the best ways Brainchip can help the world is to help future businesses be more efficient, in particular as emerging markets grow and they're faced with challenges as to how they grow and drive prosperity. The world actually needs companies like Brainchip who can help them grow in efficient ways that bring forth the best change for, for technical innovation. Creating solutions that foster the best technical innovation is what's going to bring the best change globally on all fronts. And, and this is where Brainship can make a massive global impact. And, and, and we need to get those principles into our, into our ESG reporting. So there's a lot of work going on there. And uh, you're going to see more from Brainship on this front in short order. 
Obviously, the primary focus of the management team is on the execution of the commercialization strategy and the imminent release of the Akita 2.0 technology platform. What role do you specifically play in supporting the management team in executing the commercialization strategy? And what is the best mechanism for a shareholder to ascertain how the management team is performing? So, so I think I can answer that simply. Um, you know, mostly advisory and 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 as a consultant, um, I, I've been part of many upon many formal product and and architecture launches. Um, however, you know, in the end of the day, the the company and the employees have to do their job. It it it, it sits with them. Um, I, I am involved to a degree where. You know, I can lend my expertise. I can share my experiences, and uh, you know, when I when I see activities that uh, the company's engaged with that 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 I can lend uh, some expertise to, um, you know, I share that with the company. Uh, on the on the performance for on the performance front, uh, as part of corporate governance, um, we, you know, at, at the board level, we do have a formal process. Um, that evaluates the executive team. That's uh, that's that's kind of part of our annual review of uh, of not just the executive team's execution, but uh, the company's execution. Thanks, Antonio. Looking beyond Brainchip for a moment, can you paint a picture for our shareholders about the general state of play within the global AI sector, and if possible? drill into some of the common issues that are impacting on the decision-making processes of customers that may be affecting the adoption of new technologies like neuromorphic AI? Okay, wow, uh, super question. Uh, okay, there's a lot to unpack there. So, um, so let, me, um, let me start generally, and then I'll move to the customers and, 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 and what are some of the decision points for the customers. So let me start, let me start generally. So, so globally, AI adoption's clearly growing. While there has been some slowness and drag in, in, in venture, venture capital investment in, into startups, um, you know, there's still a substantial amount of capital available to companies in the right sectors. Innovation is happening everywhere. It's, it, it's, it's an awesome time. So macro level, things look really, really good. Now, while the cloud continues to grow, the challenges we at Brainchip like to talk about are, are centered more on the move toward the edge in AI. There's a, there's a recent report, uh, the, the Revolver, Revolver Report, uh, which Brainchip contributed to, and, and I hope everyone looks at. It, it, it highlighted the strong drivers for edge applications. Uh, today, smartphone automotive platforms are, are clearly center stage with respect to intelligent AI platforms, but, but you're beginning to see other verticals come forward. Um, industrial automation, agricultural, smartphone, uh, uh, building automation, healthcare, all coming into play, adopting solutions in, in, in edge AI. Now, what's interesting though is these players are are naturally picking platforms or solutions that you know are cost effective, broadly available, easy to use software stacks, strong ecosystems. You know they're 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 checking those boxes that you'd expect them to be checking. Um, so it's all headed in the right direction. The expectation of a fifteen to sixteen trillion dollar impact by AI on global GDP. I think that's what Price Waterhouse was putting out. Um, yeah, I, I'd say those projections look real, um, equally as real as the potential for an AIoT market that could be between one and two trillion. So, so a lot happening at the at, at the broad sense, in the general sense. A lot, a lot of good momentum. Industry is definitely headed in the right direction. So, what are the customers thinking about? That was the second half of your question, and 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 and, and their decision making. So, so for me, four things kind of come to mind. So, so the first is customers are thinking about is, is AI a core competency and or a differentiator for them? You know, many, many of many potential customers, they, they start off trying to build it in-house. And in their first generation of products, there's a number of solutions which, which we would call, you know, good enough. It works and 
and, and off they go with their AI development and product creation. But as AI computation becomes more complex, you know, there's going to be a large number of these players that will have to move and adopt to more best in class available solutions in the market, which is, you know, the root of an IP approach. And, you know, that's why we at BrainChip are, we, we have an IP model and we've pushed in that direction. So second, it's, it's how easy is the technology, you know, uh, to evaluate and adopt? How, how, how simple can I look at it, decide if it's for me and get it adopted? So what we have to remember there is what, what customers are faced with is, you know, the, the cost of software development and support is substantially larger than hardware. So any technology that requires kind of a ground up change to the software stacks is not really attractive. It's not, it's not good. And so that's why at BrainChip, we've taken the approach to simplify the software stack and and, and tooling with, with MetaTF and, and, and trained models in anticipation of, of, of this sort of area in terms of how customers are, are, are looking at the market. So third would be how efficient or feature-wise um, important the IP is to the product and then whether you build or buy. So the way we look at it is an external piece of IP needs to be an order of magnitude better uh, in terms of the three Ps. Well, performance, power, and price, you know, in order to get selected. You know, we're confident at BrainChip of our value proposition here. And, and, and BrainChip is already starting to shine through the, the, the claims uh, with other offerings that you're seeing in the industry today in, in, in regards to that third point. And then lastly, I think customers are, 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 are noodling on integration and implementation and it being simple and low risk. You know, traditionally, Neuromorphic architectures tend to be analog, and hence, you know, it's it's it, it, it can be difficult to get right and port. On a similar vein, you know, spiking neural networks are still kind of in early development for production, and this is exactly why BrainChip took the fully digital approach and and standard single clock design and doesn't need any esoteric techniques to get us implemented. This puts us in the position of being a very low risk solution. So while we can run spiking neural nets, we took the strategic decision to support today's convolutional and transformer networks. So customers kind of can ease into using brain chip and it's ready for production in today's models. So all of these, all of those kind of four value propositions, if, if we call it, um, are starting to, to, to get more clearly articulated and messaged, and, and, and customers are, are beginning to really tune into our value. And this is why, you know, you're, you've heard from us and, and you heard at the AGM that, you know, our engagement level uh, and, and quality have, have improved radically. It, it, it should also be noted that there are more startups and AI offerings from existing IP vendors that have slowed down decision makers and have sent many in the industry down the wrong path, along with just a general slowdown of the economy. However, most companies are investing for the long term and we're excited about that proposition and we feel we're in a very, very, very good position to, uh, to leverage it. A uh, bit of a long-winded answer there, but uh, but there was a there was a lot to unpack with your question, Tony. There sure was, uh, Antonio. Thanks for that. This is the end of part one. To listen to part two of the interview, please click on the link on the quarterly investor podcast section of the investor relations page of the Brainchip website. Thank you for listening to the Brainchip Quarterly Investor Podcast. Please remember to rate and review on your favorite podcast platform. You can always learn more at brainchip.com.